Liver blood supply. The liver is a 1.3 to 3.0 kilograms weighing, soft, pinkish brown organ that is responsible for a whole range of functions, including drug detoxification, glycogen storage, protein synthesis, and the production of bile, which is necessary for digestion. Before diving into the liver's blood supply, it would be helpful to revisit the anatomy of the largest internal organ of the human body very briefly. The human liver can be grossly divided into two lobes, a right and a left, by the falciform ligament. There are two additional lobes that can only be seen from behind. The quadrate is situated between the gallbladder and the round ligament, while the chordate lobe is found facing cordially between the inferior vena cava, the ligamentum venosum, and the porta hepatis. It must be kept in mind that a lot of anatomists classify these two lobes as the subparts of the right lobe of the liver. The blood supply of the liver involves two major vessels, the portal vein and the hepatic artery. Hepatic tissue receives oxygenated blood via the hepatic artery. Whilst the portal vein collects the deoxygenated blood from the gastrointestinal tract, spleen and pancreas, filters it in the liver, eliminates toxins and processes the nutrients it absorbs from the gastrointestinal tract. Let's look at both systems one by one. Hepatic artery. The hepatic artery contributes about 30% of the entire hepatic blood supply. The celiac trunk, arising at the level of T12 from the abdominal aorta, gives rise to three arteries. The left gastric artery, the splenic artery, and the common hepatic artery that will supply blood to the liver. The common hepatic artery travels retroperitoneally towards the right in the hepatoduodenal ligament of the liver and divides into gastroduodenal artery below, which supplies the stomach or gastro and the duodenum and proper hepatic arteries, which supply the liver. The proper hepatic artery branches into the right and left hepatic arteries that supply the liver's right and left lobes respectively. The right hepatic artery gives off an important branch called the cystic artery to supply the gallbladder and the cystic duct. Hepatic portal vein. The portal vein contributes about 70% of the hepatic blood supply, but all of the blood is deoxygenated. Hepatic portal vein is located in the abdominal cavity and is formed by the union of the splenic veins and the superior mesenteric vein that channel the deoxygenated blood from the spleen, gastrointestinal tract and its accessory organs to the liver. The veins that contribute to the splenic vein include the pancreatic veins, the left gastroepiploic vein, the short gastric veins and the inferior mesenteric vein with its branches. The second component of this merger, the superior mesenteric vein, collects blood from the allele veins, the jejunal veins, the ileocolic veins, the middle and right colic veins, the anterior inferior, anterior superior, posterior inferior, pancreatic coduodenal vein, the right gastroepiploic vein. Few veins drain directly into the portal vein including the left and right gastric veins, the posterior superior pancreatic coduodenal vein, and the cystic vein. One must keep in mind that the portal venous system enables the blood from one set of capillary beds to be drained into another set of capillary beds without first returning to the heart. The hepatic portal system links the capillary bed of the gastrointestinal tract with its counterpart of the liver. From the gastrointestinal tract, the blood that is rich in nutrients is first brought to the liver for processing. In the liver, amino acids and monosaccharides are either stored or used to make new proteins and carbohydrates. The liver filters the toxins that might have been absorbed with the food and also removes vitamins and cofactors from the blood for storage. When the body needs the stored substances, they are released back into the circulation via the central veins. The blood flowing through the liver tissue empties into the central vein of each hepatic lobule. The central vein of each lobule merges into the interlobular vein, which then coalesce together to form mainly three hepatic veins and bring the deoxygenated blood to inferior vena cava just before it passes up through the diaphragm and travels back to the heart. That's how the liver is able to maintain its dual blood supply. From this, the three takeaways are the hepatic portal vein supplies 70% of the blood to the liver, while the hepatic arteries supply the remaining 30%. Hepatic arteries supply oxygenated blood to the liver, while the portal vein brings deoxygenated blood along with the nutrients and substances from the gastrointestinal tract. 
The hepatic portal system connects the capillaries of the gastrointestinal tract with the capillaries in the liver. From the gastrointestinal tract, the blood that is rich in nutrients is brought to the liver for processing before return to the heart. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.